Hello, we are going to actually look at how a pathologist would examine a case of papillary thyroid carcinoma, both grossly and microscopically, focusing on the important prognostic parameters. So just to run through, uh, we're going to look at size, histologic type, grade, presence of lymphovascular invasion, surgical margins, presence of extrathyroidal extension, and lymph node involvement. Let's start off with size, and usually we would measure this grossly. So in this instance, the tumour is 2.3 centimetres. We would later confirm the extent of the tumour microscopically. Sometimes the tumour actually extends a little bit further or extends a little bit less than what we thought, and then we would follow the most accurate measurement. The next thing we want to look at is histologic type, and we can clearly see that this is a classical papillary thyroid carcinoma with very well-formed papillary structures and the very classical nuclear features. So tumor type is classical PTC. Uh, we don't actually need to grade this separately because classical PTC is by definition well-differentiated thyroid carcinoma. Now let's move on to lymphovascular invasion and we usually assess around the edges or the periphery of the tumour. So in this instance, we actually did find a little focus of lymphovascular invasion and therefore this is present. The next thing we want to assess is surgical margins. So I'm most concerned about this area because I can see the tumour is kind of really close to the margin here. So I'll take a sample from there and let's examine this sample and we can see that the tumour just touches on the surgical margin and therefore the margin is involved focally. The next thing we want to look at is whether there is extra thyroidal extension and sometimes when the surgeon has difficulty clearing the tumour, he will actually also excise a little cuff of the adjacent skeletal muscle or uh, soft tissues. And in this instance, when we examine this microscopically, here is the skeletal muscle. There is no tumour involving the skeletal muscle. So there is no extrathyroidal extension. And the last thing we want to look at is whether or not there is lymph node involvement. So this depends on whether the clinician um, excises additional lymph nodes in the lymph node dissection, or sometimes we can find perithyroidal lymph node when we examine the thyroid itself. So in this instance, there were actually metastases in two out of two perithyroidal lymph nodes. Here is an example of a lymph node within the perithyroidal fat, and um, we can see that there is a metastatic deposit here. It measures 0.2 centimeters. We would measure the largest metastatic focus, and in this instance, the MET is cystic, which is very common in metastatic papillary thyroid carcinoma. Here is a higher magnification view showing the papillary structures and the lymph node parenchyma. In this instance, there is no evidence of extranodal involvement. So just to summarize all the prognostic factors, the size is 2.3 cm, the histologic type is classical PTC, and grading is not applicable in this instance. There is lymphovascular invasion. The surgical margins are focally involved. There is no evidence of extrathyroidal extension. And there is lymph node involvement in two out of two perithyroidal lymph nodes. So the largest lymph node met is 0.2 centimeters in size. And this is what the final summary of the entire pathology report would look like. Uh, thyroid gland, total thyroidectomy, the type of tumour, the focality, whether it's uni or multifocal, the size, presence of lymphovascular invasion, resection margins, extrathyroidal extension, and also the lymph node status. So all this information would be very helpful to the managing clinical team in terms of whether to proceed with radioiodine treatment or subsequent follow-up management.